If you want to fork SafeMoon, you need to understand well its code. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the code of SafeMoon and explain you the main part. So this is the GitHub repo of this course, fork SafeMoon. And I copy pasted the smart contract of SafeMoon in the contracts folder, SafeMoon fork. So let's go inside. So first of all, we start with the pragma statement of Solidity. So we use Solidity 0.6. This is not the most recent version, but it's also not too old. Then we have the interface for ERC20 tokens. That's because SafeMoon itself is an ERC20 token. So here, this is just an interface. So we just have the function signature without the implementation. So we scroll down. Then we have a library called SafeMass. So this is used to solve a problem of Solidity called overflow and underflow. In more recent version of Solidity, we don't need this because this behavior is built in into Solidity, but for Solidity 0.6, the version we're we are using, we do need safe mass. So let's keep scrolling down. Then here, context not very interesting. Then here, a library with a function to tell us if an address is a smart contract or not. So. Let's keep scrolling down. This is not the most important. Then contract ownable. So this allow you to have an owner in your smart contract. So let's keep scrolling down. This will allow you to do some access control in your smart contract basically. So all of these smart contract that I showed you before, they are copy pasted from open Zeppelin, which is a Solidity library. So we can import this code directly from open Zeppelin, but in this case, we copy pasted the code in our file because if you have everything in a single file, it's easier for deployment. After we have the interface for Uniswap factory and Uniswap v2 pair. So this can be a little bit confusing. So SafeMoon needs to interact with PancakeSwap, but PancakeSwap itself is a fork of Uniswap. So in order to interact with PancakeSwap, we're actually going to use the interface of Uniswap. Okay, so let's keep scrolling down. Here we still have an interface for Uniswap that we're gonna use for PancakeSwap. By the way, we're not going to use all of this function. We're just gonna use a few of them. Okay, so let's keep scrolling. Let's keep scrolling down. Here, Uniswap router. So it's going to be used for the router contract of PancakeSwap. Okay, let's keep scrolling down. Okay, and finally, we have our smart contract SafeMoon. So first, we inherit from a couple of other smart contracts to inherit from some functionality. Then this two line is to use some library it's not very important then after in this part we define a lot of variable so this is a mapping for the reflection balances and this is for the token balances so i already explained reflection and token balances before in this training then allowances this is for delegated transfer is excluded so it's possible to exclude some addresses from the transfer fees then we define a total supply here. Also the total supply in terms of reflection. Then we also have variable for all the fee that were charged. Then here's some metadata about the token. I'm going to explain in the next video how to customize all of this, don't worry. Then here we define a parameter for each transaction fee. Then here we define two pointer to interact with the router contract of PancakeSwap. And with the pair contract of PancakeSwap, it's going to be our liquidity pool. Then here, some variable to toggle the 5% transfer fee where you add some liquidity to PancakeSwap. Then here's some variable where you can restrict the maximum amount for each transaction. Then here, a couple of events. It's not the most important. This, you can skip it. And here, very important, this is the code of the constructors. This is executed only once when you first deploy the smart contract to the Binance Smart Chain. So we pass it as argument, the address of the router contract of PancakeSwap. Then here in this line, we assign all the token to the address which deploy this contract. Then we get a pointer to the router contract of PancakeSwap. Then here we are going to create the liquidity pool for our token on PancakeSwap. The two token of the pool will be the address of our SafeMoon fork 
and the address of wrap BNB. So even though here it say wrap ether, that's because the router of PancakeSwap uses the same interface as Uniswap, but actually in the context of PancakeSwap, here this is going to give you the address of wrap BNB. Then here we instantiate the pointer to the router contract. Then we exclude from the transaction fee the owner of the contract, so that's the address that deployed the contract, as well as the token itself, and we, and we emit a transfer event. Okay, so after I'm not going to do all the function, just the main one, so here, these are some function to return the metadata of the token. Here, the total supply of the token. Uh, here, function to get the balance of a specific address. So it's a little bit more complex than most other ERC20 token. We need a function to calculate the token balance of an address and it's going to use the reflection mapping in order to do this. Then here, very important function to transfer tokens. So we're going to see after what is this underscore transfer function and allowance and approve this is for delegated transfer, exactly like in other ERC20 token. Transfer from, this is also for delegated transfer. Increase allowance, decrease allowance, same thing for delegated transfer. So let's keep going down. So here we can know if an address is excluded from the reward. You can also get the total fee that we're paid. Delivery is not very important. This one we can skip. Token from reflection, this is used by balance off to compute the balance of an address exclude from reward. So this is protected. Only the owner can call this. So we can exclude an address from the 5% that are redistributed for each transaction. We can do the other operation, include in reward. So by default, everybody is included in the reward. But if we want, we can call this function exclude from reward for some addresses. Okay, this one, let's skip it. Exclude from fee. So we can decide that some addresses don't have to pay the 10% transaction fee. We can do the other operation, including fee. We can decide what's the redistribution fee. So originally it's 5%, but we can change this. Also the other 5% to be added to the liquidity pool of PancakeSwap. We can change this with this function. We can also adjust the maximum amount that we can transfer in a single transaction. We can toggle the 5% that are sent to the liquidity pool on and off. Here, this function is not very important. Uh, this function, we're going to skip them for now. Let's skip this, skip this. And yeah, here, this is an important function, underscore transfer. So every time you transfer a token, this is going to be called. So here we do a couple of sanity check. Then if this is not a transaction that involves the owner, we make sure that the amount transfer is below the max transaction amount after. So I spare you the detail here, but the most important is swap and liquify. So that's when we are going to add the 5% transaction fee to the liquidity pool of pancake swap. And after let's scroll down and here we're going to call token transfers. This is when we do the actual token transfer. So token transfer, I think, I think this, yeah, this is here, token transfer. And here, depending on whether the sender or the recipient is excluded from the 5% redistribution, we're gonna have different function. But let's take a simple example, transfer standout. So there is no exclusion, transfer standout here. So here we are going to deduct the amount of reflection from the sender and we're gonna add this to the recipient. Here we take the 5% fee to provide liquidity and here reflect fee we do the redistribution by decreasing the total supply of reflection. So they're not going to be a for loop where you manually send token to every holder because that will cost way too much gas. Instead, we just decrease the total reflection supply. All right, that's it for the walkthrough of the code of SafeMoon.